Thank you. You're welcome. How long has it been since you haven't had dairy? About four or five. Four or five years? Yeah. You feel great? Yeah. So you said you get up and jog every day. Yeah? Miles. Did four miles this morning. This morning? Yeah. Wow. Six miles. I average about 10, 20 miles. It depends. I do other exercise too, lighter stuff. So I guess we we don't get our energy from cheese, right? No. no. It's not coming from baby cows. Yeah, it's, it's made for baby cows. You got it right here. I think the cheese thing is probably worse than me. Well, I mean, there's a yeah, lot of information yeah. now. It's just so processed. It's so much yeah. Like, yeah, definitely. You know, I can't even imagine eating it, you know. Mm -hmm. but, but I think it's um, the process that they use to make it, you know, right? curds and whey. And, and the addiction is right now, uh, the most right difficult. Yeah. yeah. Because the people who carry it are saying a lot of them have stopped but, meat for many years. A lot of people don't get their meat. Yeah. Or some of them have problems because they don't know how to cook without eggs, making different goods. And after they realize that, yeah, yeah. She figured out ways to make all these foods. Replacing, replacing it, yeah. Yeah, delicious replacements. Yeah, they taste that satisfy the craving. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. But I think initially there are addictions like Neil Bernard talks about meat addiction, dairy addiction, sugar addiction. Yeah, you're right. But anyway, there's some. Some are harder for some people than others. Yeah, yeah, we all have our, our battles. You know, stronger addiction. I think it's an ongoing thing, it's a cultural thing. Yeah. And we're all stuck in this culture. We're creating a new culture. Mm hmm. Some new information that on the table. Yeah, I was vegetarian conference, I was really confused by it. It was vegan, but they call it vegetarian. It's in Johnstown, Ohio. I was confused because everybody was saying different things. But there was some commonality there, like whole foods, usually lower in fat. Yeah. All vegan, all the animals. Yeah. Earth foods, well, natural the foods. Principles that the, that my, uh, definitely. Yes, definitely. Here. You know, eating. You know, for your body, not just for to eat. Yeah, just to eat to satisfy your addiction. That's what we've been taught. Yeah, yeah. Food is part of everything we do. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. celebrations, and it's always just over and over. Yeah, overindulgence. The holidays, the whole holiday season, you know, starting with uh, trick or treat, you get your candy rush. Then we move to Thanksgiving, you get a full, full table full of uh, stuffing, basically, you know. And in between, let's do it again at Christmas. And in between, people feel that way, like McDougal. Yeah, yeah. He talks about people in this country eat, eat like holiday food and they're eating that way every Yeah, 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 yeah. He talks about getting back to the peasant. Yeah, the so peasant. When he did his research, he found that the people that, that ate the least and were eating all mostly plant food, it was hard to find an all-vegan society, but yeah. maybe they were like 95% and all those. Yeah, yeah. In Hawaii, he did all these studies, and, and, he, and he wasn't even a, he was just an MD. And he found that his healthiest people were the people that were still eating the, the old way. Mm -hmm. Definitely, right. definitely. Not the processed food, the man-made food. Uh, fired food, you know, it's, it's, you know, towards the raw side of things, natural sun foods. Yeah. But I do try to get more raw, you know. Yeah. People have different arguments about 100% raw, this and that. Oh, yeah? You know, I think it's more. Less processed food, food, definitely. Food, steam it, or a little bit of rice, and potatoes. Like, definitely. But primarily, you know, salads, eat slow. Mm -hmm. They're all things I'm working on. There's a lot of there's a lot of factors that go into eating. Still yeah. Yeah. I'm working on. But I feel when I go to these vegetarian events, you see these guys in their 70s and 80s, and they're just still vital. Yeah. Yeah. Don't have the same health problems as people 30 or 40 years ago. Yeah. It's her habit. People, mom, I'm just turning 60. I can use guys that are getting sick. Like both my brothers have high blood pressure and all this other stuff. Not you, huh? They say, well, you're just like, no, no. It's, it's, just, it's one plus one equals two. Yeah. You know. Some things are genetic. Yeah. And some things. Yeah, some things. It's 90% genetic. Why not take care of yourself? Yeah, why not take care of yourself? Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's 50 50. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's a matter of living longer, necessarily. It's a matter of living better. Better, yeah. I mean, maybe or maybe not we can extend our life. Yeah, you might get some more years, but you're adding more life to your years. Yeah, you know, but, I mean, and that's what I see at these conferences. It's just so much health and, and, and a lot of it's mental as well. Definitely, definitely. Mental health. 
a direct relation between mental health and phys physical, physiological yeah. health. Yeah. And I have friends with Which is terribly false. physical actually, indications that have gone yeah. this way, and that's they're still better. Yeah. Too much yeah. Protein. The woman that Dairy. works with us, Marion Leather, is in a wheelchair. She was shot. Just, just, you know, and and mm. now she's a hardcore oh, vegan. Yeah. And she can't get up and do all the stuff that I do. But she's 65 years old. If you saw her and looked at her skin and everything, yeah. she's like, God, she is the skin of somebody. You know, 20, 30 years ago. Really, yeah. She has, so there are signs of, of you. I don't care. Yeah. But she, she's an amazing, I mean, person. But she she had a doctor that told her, you need to you know, get into raw food, yeah. get all the animal out, which she did a long time. You know, and you brought up the genetic part of it. And I mean, I, I kind of look at it like we're, we're dealing with a blood stream that's been eaten wrong for for many generations you know there's a there's a turnaround process that yeah, hey you can cycle. you can eat you know all the natural foods you want but you're still dealing with your physiology that was passed upon to you in your bloodline you know yeah. from you know we hundreds thousands of years of eating meat and bread and wine and you know all, all the stuff that people have been eating for thousands of years that aren't necessarily sun foods you know yeah. so, um, so you're right yeah. and I think it's a big turnaround. What you find is that when you start cleaning out or getting better, and then you go back to some of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, then it's a real drug, huh? Because I'm not perfect. I mean, I've done some things I should Yeah, there's the ups and downs. Next day, I'm going got to pay for it now, yeah. yeah. I just noticed that the guy had a clean feeling. Mm -hmm. Basically, trying to eat a little bit less. Yeah. Uh, she would, these are my times. Yeah. Because I tend to. Yes, yes, yeah. I eat really fast myself. No matter what it is, it's eating fast, huh? Yeah. 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 And uh, so some of these conferences, some of these places I go, I'm around other people that are eating slower or keep some eating slower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to eat slower, especially when you've when you've had uh, you know thirty thousand meals where you shoveled it in your mouth over yeah. ten years. You know. Yeah, chew the bite, you know, twenty, thirty, forty times. Yeah. <laughs> Swallowing as quick as possible. Yeah. You're watching my dog eat. I so I don't want to be in my dog. Yeah. It's okay for a dog to eat. That. Yeah. 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 Only, also, only eating what you need to eat. Yeah. yeah. This last speaker we had said dogs eat fast, but you never hear them bark while they're eating. Yeah. No, no, they're busy. Because <laughs> they're busy. Yeah. It's just like they're we're busy. eating, we're talking, we're just swallowing. It's everything. Yeah. yeah. It's everything at that moment. Bye. So I've just noticed improved from trying to follow some of these principles. Yeah, yeah. Which one of these books would you recommend the most as far well, right as the first we reader? Think, well, for what we're doing, the World Peace Guide, and this is more oriented towards uh, veganism from the standpoint of feminism and from spirituality. The China Study, that's the book. Yeah, that's a great book. I don't have China Study. The China Study is a more scientific study of, of uh, all these cultures, and, and he, I don't think he found a strictly all vegan culture, but the closer they got to that, the Ch I got, right yeah, now, yeah, I, I, my parents just bought that book, The China Study. Yeah, and the guy that wrote that book, I've met several times. Yeah. T. Colin Campbell, who's a uh, PhD in yeah. animal, animal agriculture, he was into a whole meat thing, so he didn't come to this to do main thing. Or, just started studying it. He said, "Wow, what's all yeah. this stuff I've been taught about just putting the facts together." Yeah, it's wrong. So when he speaks, he doesn't speak from a standpoint of um, bias point of view. But I like this book because he does get into those issues, but he also gets into the ecology. He gets into the, the health and the, the treatment of these animals. It's, it's so it, it's reprehensible. Yeah, yeah, you can see it on the screen over there. It's uh, yeah, it's just terrible. And, uh, and I think he, this book is an exhaustive study of all that, and he gets into all the people through the ages that have. Well, he goes all the way back to Pythagoras. He talks a lot yeah, about these yeah. Greeks. It's really interesting. We, we, we need to go back as far as we can, you know, study eating, because there's a 
there's a degeneration going on. It's getting worse and worse. African or European, yeah. I mean, the Greeks, or, I mean, they, they all had it right at one time. Yeah, you know, it's getting a lot worse really quick. You know, it's getting a lot worse really so. fast. So. Fast food. I mean, this past century, just, I mean, we're just crumbling. Unbelievable. Yeah. The only good news today is that the cost of food so high, more people are eating at home, they're probably better off there yeah, yeah. than they are eating now. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that myself. I like to go out to a couple of restaurants, get a vegan thing, but not more. Yeah. Hey, let's just stay home. And make yeah, just make it yourself. Yeah, let's prepare our own food. You know, but culturally, that's weird. You know, I mean, not not going out to eat. Yeah. And how much can we really trust the restaurants to prepare them vegan? And even if they say there's no butter, they don't know. The chances of them really knowing if there's butter or milk in it, very slim. There are problems with that. And yeah. A lot of times, they trust you go to a place like that, they leave the dairy off, and they serve it as a dairy, and they got to take it back. Yeah. So they're going to throw all that crap away. So yeah, waste. I feel responsible. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, it's a very wasteful situation altogether. Oh, I can't believe it. It's yeah. Wasteful in every way. The way yeah. they package it, the, the whole thing. Yeah. 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 It's a sick situation. Yeah. <laughs> Opposite of healthy. You know, it's the amazing, but the more I think about it, how many people I mean that eat out most of the time. Yeah, a yeah. Large percent. Like when I, we ate at home almost always. And then my father, who was a who traveler, he was a salesman. So he would go out of town, my mother would say, okay, we're going to go to Frisch's and get some. That would happen maybe once every month or so. Yeah. Or we'd go to some joint. It wasn't healthy. Mm -hmm. But maybe once, once a month or so. Month, yeah, that's. Know. that's. And the food we had at home. Compared to now, weekend. it's two, three it's times a week, if not every night. My little right. brother eats out every night. It was not as bad. Is, is the sand diet now. It's yeah. not a vegan diet, but it was vegetables and fruits were involved. Yeah. I guess my mother didn't like salads, I remember. You know, my father got older, he started drinking carrot juice and eating sprouts. He mm -hmm. started doing some of the things I was doing, and he had uh, much better health because of that. He would drink the carrot juice and get it. Oh, yeah. And, and, and sprouts. He, did, he never became a vegetarian, but he started thinking about it. And he said, man, it starts making me food. He started swimming, his arthritis. So in any age, you know, it doesn't yeah. matter how old you are. Definitely. You can have them prove You can start to turn this around. You know, this, this. Any age. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If I have friends in their, in their 50s, 60s, now I'm too late, I'd say it's never, it's never too late. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get through to my parents, you know. They're, they're changing. I've got them eating salads every day and, you know, turning their average American diet around to a to a much cleaner diet yeah. of uh, stir fries with vegetables and and uh, fruit intake every day, fruit juices instead of pop, uh, salad, heavy, huge, awesome salads, you know, just really getting into salads. I mean, the whole world of eating that exists within, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just the whole world of eating natural and clean. So you're all raw now? I'm not, I'm not necessarily raw. I practice the mucusless diet healing system, which is a transition right. towards towards uh, fruits and starchless vegetables, and I've got to the point where I'm off of uh, meat, dairy, uh, rice, bread, flour, all flour products. Um, I mainly eat stir fries, uh, Ezekiel bread, uh, Ezekiel bread. With I have some recipes with that. If I use bread, it's Ezekiel bread. Um, fruits, fruits, and I stick to starchless vegetables. I'm off white potatoes. I eat sweet potato, sweet potatoes. Uh, all pop is gone. I mean, I'm coming from a spot where it was really just once I got the information, I had a lot of work to do. You know, we all do, but. Yeah, well, there's a lot. I mean, a national group. I, there's a guy, National Health Association, which is an organization that comes from natural hygiene, which is sort of related to the rent. A little bit different philosophies. We do have some cooked food, but you're very into a combining. And of course, it's a choice. I mean, some of them eat yeah. almost all raw, some of them eat some starches, but yeah. combine in a certain way. Yeah. And they, they're not so much into all this juicing and spirulina and all that. I think that you're better off just eating the whole food. Yeah. I think, you know, whatever feed or wheat grass, I mean, some do that. And I try that for a while, and it's okay. And I know some people that swear by this thing, so I'm not going to say it right or wrong. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But, but I'm finding, you know, just whole foods for the most part. Yeah, it's interesting that it all depends on where my uh, physiolog physiological condition is that day, that week. 
you know, that month as, that dictates how clean or unclean it'll be. Yeah. Um, you know, if I'm going through a, a harsher elimination, some type of sickness or elimination of mucus, sickness, cold or anything, it's going to be, uh, you know, a lot, you know, a lot more fruits and vegetables, you know, to, and, as a, you know, less, less uh, Ezekiel bread and, and stir fries and that type of thing. But it's just controlling that elimination because it changes, you know, it, just where your uh, condition is changes day by day, you know. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, or days you might not want to eat hardly at all. Yeah, yeah. Like today, today is a fasting day, like performance days, you know, it's a juice fast or, or a dry fast so far. But, uh, you know, and I feel fine. I, mean, I just mean, feel it's great. It's funny because I remember Dick Gregory who was mm -hmm. into a lot of this. When I first was reading about him, I'm like, hearing these stories about him fasting for like. He's the guy that I just went to. Yeah. 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 100 days, and then he goes out and runs 10 miles. Yeah, well, it's, it's like the conclusion. So you shouldn't exercise. I mean, also, it's always just you should, you shouldn't. He was, he defied. Well, I, I, I heard him one time. Not too long ago. He's a comedian. He just nailed me through the whole thing. He's just jiving on the ice. He's a really funny guy. Yeah. And I went up yeah, to him after this. He's an amazing guy. He wrote the book Diet for Folks Who Eat because I think he spent less time eating than a more days than I did. I don't think everybody's been in the bag. But he showed me that it's like, man, everybody's body's different. He was really yeah. in tune with a lot of things. Maybe I'm not ready for it. Yeah, well, I mean, the possibilities of the human body to clean itself up and then the, the ability to fast. I mean, we don't know about that in this culture and day and age. Do it in nature, you know, it's, yeah, when, it, when an animal's sick, it stops eating. You know? well, our dog, we have a little dog, it's a vegan dog, actually. Yeah. And, and uh, because they're omnivorous, I think, why should I get them? But like, she doesn't always eat the same every day. My wife was, oh, gosh, she didn't eat us at home. Next day, she'll eat a little more. Yeah. So, it, it, nothing has to change.